today we are looking at the A10 7850K, the new Kaveri APU from AMD. See it in the box here, see there's the name across the top. On the box itself there's not really much information about it really, there's the APU itself. On the back it's just literally on the back it says what's in the box, that's all. Okay so let's get this out of the box and have a look inside. Inside we've got a quick, quick start manual as normal. I go down there. We have the completely inadequate AMD stock cooler. Never ever use that, if at all possible. And the APU itself with a nice little AMD A series Black Edition sticker. Okay, so let's quickly go through some of the specs for this. It is it uses the new FM2 Plus socket. It has 12 compute cores, that's four CPU cores and eight GPU. They are on the Steamroller micro architecture, which is new has a 3.7 GHz base clock and a 4 GHz turbo CPU clock speed. The GPU clock speed is 720 MHz, which is reasonably modest. has a TDP of 95 watts and 4 MB of level 2 cache. The max supported RAM speed is 2133 MHz. Hi guys, okay so let's talk about the A10 78. 50k the new APU from AMD. I know I've already been through the specs before for this I just want to touch on a few things in a little more detail. The first is the GPU in this it has 512 shader cores or radeon cores or whatever your stream processors whatever you want to call it they've got so many different different kind of names. Now that if you think the uh, R7 250 has around 384 and the the R7 260 has 896, so you can see this is sort of unofficially an R7 255. That's completely unofficial, I made that up, okay? But it's, it's somewhere, so you're looking for a performance rate of somewhere below the 260, but somewhere above the 250, okay? Uh, as for the cores in this, it uses the, their new Steamroller micro architecture for them, um, and that's a, that's really focused on like parallel processing. They're really into this whole parallel processing thing, which we'll go into in just a second. Before I go down here, it only has four megabytes of level two cache, which is kind of disappointing, but it does cost a lot more money to add more cache in, so and it would be more heat, and they need a better stock cooler. Well, not that I don't need a better stock cooler anyway, because anybody that's used the AMD stock cooler know that it is terrible. Absolutely terrible. That's why I've got one in here, one in here, one in here, one in here, one somewhere else as well. Never, ever use the AMD stock cooler. Never. Anyway, uh, as for the RAM speed, is max support is 2133 MHz. I should say you can overclock that RAM further to do it with this, or in fact the 6800K here, you can do exactly the same with that as well. It only officially supports up to 2133 MHz. Okay, so as for Crossfire, if you look at the box on the 6800K, it had a little thing here that told you which was the best GPU to Crossfire it with. Now, with the 7850K, there is no such thing on this at all. It doesn't say anything like that at all. Well, it's not really been mentioned much at all by AMD, but if you uh, kind of do a lot of searching, or you can find it is compatible. They're now calling it dual graphics rather than Crossfire. I don't know whether that's to distinguish it between like two actual GPUs working together rather than something that's going to be like hybrid Crossfire, all the other things that they've called it. Like I say, there hasn't been much information about the dual graphics solution for this, but I did read that it's supposed to be compatible with any R7 card that uses DDR3 memory. So we're talking like an R7 240 here, which would have been equivalent of the 6670 that this kind of crossfires with. But obviously, that's not too relevant right now, because if you're thinking of buying one of these, then you should not be looking at buying another GPU for the next at least three months or so. If you have the money to buy a discrete graphics card and one of these, then that's what you should do now rather than buying this and a discrete one because then you're paying a premium for having another card inside it. Whereas having one single card is always better, always, always better than having two separate ones because when you've got two separate, uh, yeah, they might work very well, they might have very impressive performance, but there's always going to be like, I mean, frame rates have been an especially big problem for AMD in, the, in its recent past with the dual graphics solution, especially like this. They have got a like, a patch, not a patch, a, um, more drivers coming out, kind of February time. So we should address a lot of that, but for now, I wouldn't be looking into that too much. It's something I might test in the future, but I don't think there's going to be much interest or need for it right now. Okay, so let's talk about some of the tech, not the new technology that is going to go, that is 
in the 7850k. So the first and the biggest one is HSA. And I know if you live in the UK, that's like some health thing. But uh, gloss over that. that. This stands for Heterogeneous Systems Architecture. And what this is, it means the CPU and the GPU can work together kind of seamlessly. And it's when it's working, when it's actually supported by people, this will be so impressive the way it works. Because normally, if, if you do get stuff that the CPU and the GPU can work on, it makes two copies of it. One for the CPU to work on, one for the GPU to work on. But this, it shares all the same thing in the middle, so it doesn't make two copies of it. it they can both work on the same thing at once. And that the, the time saving, the power saving, everything like that will be a really big deal. And, you know, maybe it could worry Intel? But we don't know what they're going to come up with ne next in relation to that type of technology. So... Also in regards to this, they have HUMA, this is Heterogeneous Uniform Memory Access. Now what this means is that the graphics card, the graphics cores and the CPU, they can all share the system memory. Like traditionally in like this one here, the 6800K, you get your system memory and then a little bit of it would be allocated for your GPU part of it. But on the new one, the whole thing is all shared together. So like it's going to be, you're going to get more memory for your graphics and things like that. Uh, I mean, I don't know what would happen if I'd have put like 16 gigabytes of 2133 memory in it, whether it would have had better performance, but for the sake of like having an even test, I've used the same thing for both of these. Uh, also it has support for AMD Mantle, which should be coming very, very, very soon. I do hear there is a driver coming out for it like within the next week, hopefully, at the time of making this video anyway. Uh, it was also has support for AMD's True Audio, which I think people haven't really been making a big fuss about. Oh, but I've seen a lot of videos from CES recently, and people were saying that like, it's only in stereo oh, you can pinpoint where the sound is coming from because it's so accurate. It's something I'd like to try. I can't tell you that it's amazing. I've only seen other people talk about it. Okay, and it does have support for iFinity up to four displays, which is pretty good for an APU. Okay, so let's talk quickly about the benchmarking system. I use these with the stock cooler at the stock speed, so no overclocking or anything like that. Both of them were used with my A88 XM Plus ASUS Micro ATX motherboard, the FM2 Plus socket. I did a review of that like a week ago, or an overview of it like a week ago. Now I use it. I didn't have the GPU boost on, it was all selected to off, all standard, completely standard. And I used two 4 gigabyte sticks of G Skill Trident X memory, which is actually 2400 megahertz, but I um, downclocked it to 2133 because that's what these officially support. Okay, so let's start with the synthetic and my real world benchmark test, which was a rendering of my one minute promo video for my channel on YouTube. Okay, so there we go. You did see that the 7850K did have a slight advantage. I mean, the numbers didn't go up significantly enough for me. I know Firestrike was has a good few hundred more on it, but again, I'm not sure that that really makes a big difference. It's kind of a small optimize. Although it's different architecture completely, but it's almost it feels like a small optimization increase. It's only like small numbers though. But there we go. I think on the last test, the my Premiere Pro rendering test of my one minute XD promo video for my channel that the reason the 6800K was a good 24 seconds faster is because it has a faster base CPU clock of 4.1 gigahertz and it turbos up to 4.4 whereas this is 3.7 to 4 and it has it was the OpenCL GPU acceleration enabled rendering test that I was doing and this 6800K has a higher GPU base clock as well over this. Now in the future like I was talking about with the HSA support this will be much quicker but while it's not got that it really this, the faster speed of this one like really made a difference there. In least that's what I think it was. It was all done on exactly the same system, exactly the same video, exactly the same way of timing. Like I just had a stopwatch to show you click start, 
Like, there's no way that I can't have done 24 seconds. Like, oh, I forgot to press it. No, that didn't happen. I start as soon as it, as soon as the box disappeared, stop. So it was exactly the same video, like exactly the same system. All the same programs were running or shut or whatever. So yeah, it was as fair as I can possibly make it. Okay, so let's now look how these two do in games. Okay, so there we go. As you saw in games, it doesn't really make have that much of an advantage over the 6800K. It feels like a small optimization increase again, even again, though it's different. And I think because the focus of this is a lot more on kind of parallel processing and things, and it's much more aimed towards get really at their weakness, which is productivity. And they kind of, although the gaming hasn't suffered, and I think once we get a decent overclock on this, and like we put the GPU boost on the motherboard, uh, this will come up, a lot, come up much better, and I will be trying that late, in a later video, so there we go. So let's talk about the price and value for money of this. So the 6800K at the moment is around £105 in the UK. I can't speak for anywhere else, I don't really know how much they are other places, but usually they're cheaper in America. Now the 7850K, the price has fluctuated a little bit on the start because this I bought this for £135 from Scan and it's now £126 on eBuy. So, but I think it's going to fluctuate. So if we call this about £130 and this 105 we're talking about £25 difference for like two to three frames per second and like pretty similar on most tests anyway of, and real world usage. But what you're paying for with that extra £25 is for the new technology, for the HSA technology. That once that gets supported by other developers and that, like especially with big things like Premiere, Photoshop, if Adobe pick it up, then it will make a huge, huge difference. And then that's where you're getting your value for money with one of these. However, I have to say, if you are just looking for an APU to game with at the moment, then I would just have to tell you to go with the older... Richland 6800k or if you don't if you want something better than this for this price for only about 30 pounds extra if you could stretch that far you could get the AMD Athlon 2 X4 750k or maybe even a 740 it wouldn't be too bad and maybe like a 260x or something like that that would be around 30 pounds more expensive but you would have a much better gaming experience Okay, so in the future I will be strapping this to the H100i and giving it a decent overclock. I have heard of people getting this up to like 5 gigahertz quite easily, but I would take that with a bit of pinch of salt because uh, AMD do have a habit of sending out their better than average samples to the testers and reviewers. So, yeah. I'll see what it's like with because this is a retail bought one. I I'm not privy to AMD sending me that stuff like that. That would be nice. So yeah, I will be going for a pretty decent overclock. I'll be bumping the memory up, up to 16 gigabytes rather than eight to see if it makes a difference. I'll be using the GPU boost on the Asus motherboard that I have that claims up to 30% performance increase with an APU. And we'll be giving it, yeah, I'll be bumping up the GPU clock and the CPU clock and see how high we can get. Stable, yeah. And see if that'll make a difference. Because if this could like get just like maybe five or six more frames per second in games, then they would be much more playable. I mean, some of them were reasonably playable. Like, Need for Speed Rivals was actually on, like, the lowest settings I could possibly get it, and I couldn't get it over 20 frames per second. 
and that it was difficult to play and it wasn't fun to play so if you have one of these at stock then that's it's not going to be possible for you Bioshock Infinite all it needs is a little bit more a tiny little bit more and it could get to being playable on medium settings uh, well it's Battlefield 4 I test that in a very strenuous place so 26 frames a second isn't too bad for that and with Mantra coming out that's going to be largely irrelevant because that will go whoosh according to them Okay, so yeah, watch out for that video. We'll be coming up probably within the next two or three weeks or so, depending what I've got going on. Okay, guys, so thank you for watching. Now, let me know in the comments, what do you think of this APU? Do you think it's worth paying around the £130 mark just for having all this new technology inside it? Or would you prefer to go for something that doesn't include the true audio that you might not care about? And there's like all this parallel processing that's kind of, maybe you don't do productivity, maybe you just want to game. Would you prefer to go for an older one or would you prefer maybe to go for a lesser Kaveri APU and then match that with a dedicated GPU for kind of a similar price? Yeah, so I'd be interested to know what you think. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and all the other things that I normally say. YouTube, website, Twitter. Yeah. Once I have, once we have like lots of people on there, at the moment I'm kind of hesitant to add lots of con lots of individual content like Twitter and Facebook because there's not really many people looking at it so but once there's enough people on there we're, we're definitely going to be running competitions giveaways because I have so much stuff lying around that I don't use that I could just give away but while I've only got like a low amount of subscribers it's not really worthwhile so so yeah that'll be coming up in the future once we are a bit bigger so thank you guys very much for watching and I will see you next time